welcome Hi. to Bill. Thank you. So excited to have you. I'm excited to be here. Guys, look at this book. We were just saying backstage how meta it is that Maddie's holding herself, book, holding book, herself, book. holding herself. It goes on so many times. Um, has anyone gotten the book yet? I guess you can't, right? It's out It just today. came out. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's so great. Thank you. And I have to say, you are 14 years old and you already have a memoir because you've done so much in your life already. And yeah, um, many people think it's not possible for me to make a memoir because I'm only 14, but I actually have a lot of things to talk about, so yeah. So let's kind of start um, from the beginning and why you kind of wanted to write your story down and put it in a book. I feel like a lot of people think they know every single thing about me, but there are so many things they have yet to learn. And there's so many secret hobbies that I do or just like little weird things that I like to do with my friends and like tips and tricks of makeup and hair and things that go on behind the scenes. So I really wanted to share that with everyone and show them that I am a normal teen too. And I do normal things other than go on red carpets and stuff because now that I think about it, I am just a kid from Pittsburgh who just had big dreams and now I'm doing all this stuff. So it's really important to remember that I have to stay grounded. Mm -hmm. And what did you go about, uh, how did you go about figuring out what you wanted to put in the book? Um, you know, the layout is really cool and different. Thank she you. has some personal doodles in here because she's an artist as well. I draw, yeah. um, So what, how did you kind of come up with the format? Yeah, I, well, personally, I love pictures and I love drawings and doodles and everything. So I definitely wanted to incorporate that in the book. Also, what you'll learn about is that I love to paint and I love to draw and I paint canvases all the time. So I have all the doodles in my book are ones that I drew, which is really cool Like that I got to put those in my book. And yeah, I mean, I really just wanted to make this no, not only just really educational for kids, but also just really fun and just remember that oh they don't have to just read all these pages but they get to see cool like pictures too yeah man you are so talented you draw you can dance better than i got guys i can't dance so i wish maddie could give me some dance lessons thank you there's there's plenty of things that i'm not good at though trust me like i can't throw a ball to save my life i'm horrible at sports so um well let's kind of start from the beginning and how uh dance moms kind of thrust you into the spotlight a little bit. Mm -hmm. When you look back on that time and on that show, uh, what are your thoughts? It was a really cool place for me to start because if I wouldn't have done that show, then Sia wouldn't have found me. Mm -hmm. And um, as much as it, I am glad that I'm moving on to th better things in my opinion, uh, it has benefited me a lot. And I am thankful for that opportunity. And I spent six years on that show, which is crazy, since I was eight years old. And I was so confused in the beginning. I had no clue what was going on. I was just introduced into this world where there was like all these guys following us around with cameras. And I was like, I don't, what is this? And I didn't think that anything would happen with it. I thought we would do like maybe six episodes and that would be it. Mm -hmm. But it turned into something crazy and they're still filming the show. I know, it exploded. Yeah. Um, and then can you kind of... Tell us about that moment where Sia contacted you and said, I saw you on Dance Moms, and I want you to star in every single one of my amazing <laughs> videos. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, she tweeted me. She was a fan of Dance Moms, and she watched it all the time. Like, she knew all of my solos, which was really funny. And at the time, I didn't really know who she was. I mean, I knew a couple of her songs, but she wasn't, like, a celebrity that I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe that. Because I was, like, younger, you know? I didn't really understand. And then... Um, yeah, she tweeted me and was like, hey, I just want you to be my music video. Two weeks later, I flew to LA and did the video. And like the day we met, we clicked. Uh, we ran and gave each other a huge hug the day we met. And then the first time she saw me do Chandelier, she cried. So after that, we just created this bond and then we stuck together. Like nothing, we're not sep we can't be separated anymore. I love it. Yeah. What did you uh, learn from Sia? What has she taught you about not only the business, but um, dance and kind of exploring different ways of dance? Because I know Sia's way of, of dance in her videos is different than how you were taught as a young child. No. Yeah, for sure. Uh, stepping into the video, I didn't know, I had no expectations. I didn't know what anything was going to happen. I honestly thought I was going to be like an, a background dancer. I thought Sia would be in the video. I just wasn't, I was kind of confused at the whole thing. But then afterwards, when I started learning the choreography, Ryan Heffington, who is insane, he... He's amazing. He created all of the choreography for everything we've done. 
And at first, I was so uncomfortable with it because I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so weird. I'm usually trained to point my feet and make sure I have perfect technique. But for this, I can just kind of let loose and do whatever and not be criticized for making a mistake. Like, honestly, my mistakes were good. They liked my mistakes, which was crazy. And it was such a good environment for me. And I felt it was everything was just stress free. Like, I didn't have to worry about winning a competition or making my teacher happy. Like, I, I was just like having so much fun and being goofy. Like, my faces were crazy. It was the first time I was like being a weirdo. <laughs> so, yeah, it was cool. But the best kind. And I'm sure that's kind of what Sia taught you about is, is just to be yourself. And oh, yeah. Now I'm not afraid to express myself. I'm not worried if I like don't look good all the time, which I'm still trying my best to not worry about what I look like but yeah you look amazing <laughs> thank you thank you but I do go like in my book I go through a lot of struggles as other teenagers do like things that they're insecure about I have the same insecurities even though it may not look like that maybe on like an Instagram post or something but I do I worry about all the things that teenagers do so yeah what are some of the things you want to teach fellow young people about, you know, you have an experience that's different because you're in the spotlight as well as growing up and being a teenager. But what's something that you want other young people to take away from you and a message that you kind of want to spread? Well, I think that it's really important to just be yourself and not try to worry what other people are telling you what to do, not trying to dress or do your hair and makeup how other girls on social media are doing it. Just, you know, I feel like a lot of girls are doing that now to just fit in. And trust me, there's been so many times where I try to fit in with everyone else. But I've learned that it's so much better to just be yourself and not worry about what other people think. And it's okay if you're weird and it's okay if you might not dress like so perfect. But I think it's more about really being comfortable with yourself mm -hmm. and not like, you know, just letting people see this is the real me. And if you don't like me, then you don't like me. Well, you were saying backstage that you would rather just be in comfortable clothes. And oh, literally. Like, <laughs> if I literally, today, I would have showed up in my pajamas if I could. I just love, like, being comfortable. And I was, when we were on tour, I was literally in sweatpants every day. And then after we got off tour, I was in that habit. Mm -hmm. So I'd be going for dinner. And my mom's like, you can't wear sweatpants, and you have to brush your hair. I'm like, well, why? Like, I just want to I just want to be comfy. Yeah. yeah. What is that like to be on tour and, and when you go out to these stadiums and you see all the fans who are there to watch you dance? and um, That must be pretty thrilling. It was such a rush. Mm -hmm. Being on tour, and not only just being on tour, but being 14 mm -hmm. and going on my first tour was crazy. And it wasn't as long as most tours are, but still it felt so amazing. It was long but so short at the same time. And we have, like, such a big family, like, for the SIA team. And it's always been the same people, which I love. And they're, like, my family now. It's the coolest experience. And getting to dance with the four other dancers every night, they're, like, my sister and brothers, yeah. which is crazy. And, like, getting to perform in front of that many people every night was insane to me. Like, I was, every time I would go on stage... I would get nervous. And most people think, oh, you're doing the same show every night. You, you're probably so comfortable now. No, I get nervous after, before every performance because, I don't know, I just have this rush that comes and then all these nerves come to me and I get butterflies and I never want to mess up because I'm such a perfectionist. And so. every night's different, I'm sure. And No, yeah, and we learned, um, we were experiencing new things every time and we found new ways to interpret the dance, which was cool. And what was a day like on tour for you? Um, how do you get ready to perform? And what's, you know, was it cool to hang out with Sia and on a tour bus? Yeah, it was so much fun. I basically, okay, we had the same routine like every single day. So basically we would, I would wake up at one, like 12.30 or one every single day just because we would get to bed so late from tour that I would wake up. I've never woken up that late in my life, but it felt amazing. Like I loved <laughs> sleeping. And then uh, after we would get up, we would go have breakfast, and then, you know, we would just kind of chill out for a little bit. And then when it got time to getting ready, because we didn't go on till later at night, we would watch RuPaul, and we would do our get it ready and do our hair and makeup, and then we would go on stage. Mm -hmm. And it was so funny because today I met RuPaul and I was dying. You met RuPaul? I had That's a amazing. I fangirled to myself, not to him, <laughs> but I literally got there and they were like, 
oh yeah, you'll be doing this thing with RuPaul. And I was like, shut up. <laughs> You're joking, right? Like I love RuPaul so much. So that was really cool. Yeah. Who, who are some other people that you kind of um, love or look up to, especially in the reality world? Yeah. I mean, I think like every single person knows this, but I'm, I really love Zac Efron. Like that's. Hey Zach, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> A lot of girls. Uh, I just, I don't know. There's, I've liked him since I was five years old from high school, me school. And since I wrote the book, a long time ago, like, well, a year ago, um, I've learned to control me, like, fangirling over Zac Efron, because if I ever did meet him in person, I would never fangirl, because I would always want to keep my cool, because sometimes, you know, I've had people come up, and it's overwhelming, which, it's so nice, and, like, everyone's so sweet, but I would never want to overwhelm Zac Efron, because yeah. he's Zac Efron, you know? <laughs> so, um, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I, our secret crush. Well, it's not so secret. It's not a secret. Yeah. Ever since I've been little, I've been, I wouldn't, not upset. Well, well, I guess with High School Musical, though, I mean, I even watched High School Musical. Yeah, I mean, that and was And back like, then, that was like, so, and especially, would you ever want to do something like a High School Musical or, a, you know, a musical kind of TV movie? I mean, maybe. I, I don't sing, which is really bad. I mean... I think I can sing sometimes, like if I'm in the shower or in the car. But <laughs> my sister uh, sings, and she always tells me to stop, and she says I'm really bad. So, <laughs> like, she literally, every time I'm in the car, she's like, really, Maddie, you're singing over the music, and you're horrible, you need to stop. Or, like, she'll turn off the music when I sing because I'm so bad, apparently. So. Well, you can't be good at everything. No, you can't. Yeah. You can't. But it would be <laughs> nice to sing. Yes. But you can really dance. Um, and tell us about when when did you finally, well, you started very young. You were two years old, correct? Mm -hmm. Were you always dancing? Did you always want to be a dancer? And have you ever struggled with it at all? I loved dancing ever since the start. Even though I was two years old, I still loved it. But I was horrible when I first started. I was not limber at all. I was stiff as a board, and I could barely, like, move. Even though I was little, I, there's a lot of kids who are born flexible, mm -hmm. and that was totally not me. I, was, I had to work for it. And I guess what got me through this whole thing was that I'm so passionate about dance, and I want it so bad. Like, I was so hungry for it. At the age of five, I asked my mom if I could do private lessons so I could get better. Wow. Yeah, and I cried because I was in the back of all my dances, and I lost every competition that I did for my first solo. So I kept working and working, and then eventually started like moving to the front and just worked as hard as I could because I feel like even if you don't have the best technique being passionate about dance will just make people see how good of a dancer you are just because you love it so and that's great advice that you kind of gave too on so you think you can dance that everyone watch that with Maddie as a <laughs> thank you uh, that was awesome thank you. and are they doing the next generation again or was that a one-time sort of I'm not sure they're doing the adult version this season, but hopefully they'll do a kid one again. It was such a good experience. It's probably amazing to watch other dancers um, follow their dreams. and Yeah, and it was crazy. I was inspired by kids who were younger than me. They were so good. So good. Yeah, and it, I mean, it was really nerve-wracking for me because I'm always the one being judged. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I was judging like girls and boys that I've competed against before, I was like, oh my god, this is crazy to me. But when you're watching the show or the performances, was there any type of dance that you were like, oh, I kind of want to explore that? Like, I want to get more into hip hop or ballet or... Yeah, for sure. I mean, of course, I, I do hip hop a lot, but I always feel like I could improve on that. And also, what I love is, like, the versatility of... They did Bollywood, and I would love to do a Bollywood dance. I think that would be so amazing, and the costumes are beautiful, and just the style of it is amazing. So that would be super cool. And I have to ask you, what has been your favorite Sia music video uh, that you've been in? Which dance is your favorite? That's like a really hard question. They're all so good. I love all of them just for the choreography, but of course Chandelier because it's like the original and mm -hmm. it's kind of what like started my whole career, I feel like. Yeah. But I mean, I love The Greatest. It's the most recent one and... I just love the message behind it and also the choreography and all of the dancers that were in the video were amazing. So that was such a fun video to film. And since I had to cry in the beginning of the video and in the end, all of the little kids didn't understand why I was crying. They're like, are you okay? And I was like, no, 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 it's fine. I'm just like acting. Yeah. It was sweet. They were, there was kids from maybe like six years old to like 18 year olds. So it was really cool. 
Is that kind of where you got, um, were you always interested in acting? Because I'm sure that was a good practice, but you're also going to be in a new movie called The Book of Henry, which we're all very excited about. Thank um, you. Congratulations on that. Thank you. I'm um, so excited. Everyone's been asking me and tweeting at me, when is the trailer coming out for A Book of Henry? Yeah, I hope... Do you know? I don't know exactly the dates, but I can't wait. I've done this... I did this movie when I turned 13, like the week after I started. And, oh my God, I'm just so excited for people to see it because it's the first time they're going to see me actually act in a movie, which is cool. And, I mean, it's a really great cast. Like, I couldn't have asked for a better cast for my first role which is so cool. Yeah, what did you learn from, I know it's Naomi Watts, mm -hmm. and Dean Norris plays your dad. Yeah, Dean. From Breaking Bad Guys, that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, what did you learn from some of them, and what do they teach you about acting? Well, I mean, I, I feel like even when we did the table read, I was just in awe by Naomi. I was just like, oh my God, she's incredible. She was crying in the table read, like in her scene, and I was like, she's so good. Like I was tearing up listening to her, because it was the first time we all got together and read it together. And I feel like not, I don't feel like not even in general that she just gave me advice, but just watching her, mm -hmm. just uh, even just uh, watching her scenes or even rehearsing with her, I feel like I learned so much. Even just the way she was turned to the camera, like her camera angles. So I just picked up on every little thing because I was the only one in that film where it was my first time doing a movie. So I felt the pressure, even though I wasn't the youngest one, of course, like yeah. Jacob, has, he's amazing. Jacob Tremblay, and I even learned from him. He's nine years old, so uh, it was really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. And is there another movie that you're working on with Sia? I heard something called Sister. <laughs> is that really happening, or can you tell us anything about that? Uh, well, we were on tour, so we put it on hold, but we will be doing stuff in the future, so I'm so excited. There will be a lot of cool things coming up, and I'm so excited because people always wonder if like we're done doing Sia stuff after tour, but no. We'll, we'll always continue to do stuff. So. She seems like she's a great mentor. Oh, she's like my biggest inspiration in life. Like I couldn't have asked for a better person to give me advice or just lean to if I ever have like a problem. Like she's just always there for me, which is great. Yeah. And so what do you want people to take away from your book when they read it? Um, I know you mentioned that you want people to know a little bit more about who you are outside of dance and reality TV. Um, but what's something that sticks out to you in the book that you really want people to walk away from it with? Yeah, well, of course, I want people to walk away knowing that, like I was saying earlier, as much as I get to do cool opportunities, I am just a normal teenager like other kids. And I want them to know that they can, I can relate to them in ways and they can relate to me in ways as there's things that go on in my family. I A lot of people think, oh, like, me they think I'm perfect sometimes because I get to do these cool things but really I don't live a perfect life and also when I was dancing and acting I didn't just come naturally you have to work hard at things so I think I want people to know that I actually do work for it and nothing comes naturally like I just um, I am a hard worker and I want to put the work in also in the book there's a part where I say, why not? And basically, it's just meaning like, why not try new things? Why not step out of your box for once? Or maybe just not be afraid to put yourself out there? Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really important thing that I want people to walk away with saying, why not? Like, why not just try something new? Yeah. Yeah. And you've always tried things new. And, and even in the book, you have pictures of you and your sister and your family, uh, your sister some Kenzie. embarrassing old <laughs> dance photos where I was horrible. Like, there's some horrible pictures of me dancing so people can see that I did have to work for it because I was horrible. And, and speaking of trying new things, you and Kenzie have, like, a fashion line as well on top of dancing. And I know Kenzie's a singer. Yeah. Um, so before I go to audience Q&A, can you talk a little bit about your fashion line and what that's meant for you? Yeah, I created a clothing line called Maddie Style. And uh, I was so excited to do this because my favorite thing was I got to design the stuff and I got to pick out the fabrics and the designs, which was so cool because I've never really been that involved in anything for myself, you know, getting to do something to put out there. And it's in Nord Nordstrom now, which is like crazy. Like never thought that would happen. And I see little girls wearing it on the street and I'm like, that is so cool to me. Uh, but this line was all about comfort. Like I want girls to feel comfortable in this line without having to feel restricted and they can just move around in it. Like the, um, 
the main message for my line is wear what moves you. Mm -hmm. So basically, you can just feel free in the clothes. Yeah, well, yeah. I think you're teaching young women and boys yeah. um, amazing lessons, and we Thank appreciate you. it. And you're so, so talented. Thank you so much. Um, but I want to open it up to some of your fans, because I see some of them out here. <laughs> Who's first? Right here? My name is Melanie, and I dance at the Brighton Ballet Theater. Oh, cool. And my question is, who or what inspired you to write the book? Ooh, that is a very good question. Um, I would say all of the people who support me and all of the people who are fans of me, I think they really inspired me to write the book. And little girls and boys who aspire, who are inspired by me, I feel like I want them to grow up and people who say that they follow in my footsteps, I want them to really be able to learn some lessons that I did. Even though I'm still so young, uh, I feel like there's some things that I could give advice from. So yeah, I, I feel like all the people that support me on social media or have really helped me like get to where I am today, I just wanted to share my little message with them. Thank you. Who's next? Um, where do you see yourself in 10 years from now? Like, do you think you'll be Ooh. on Broadway, movies, Ooh. family? I don't know. That's, that's a good question. I don't know what I'm doing in, like, five days. But <laughs> I, what I want to do, like, I don't know if this is actually going to happen. I'm crossing my fingers it does. But I would love to be in, like, a thousand movies. Well, that's over-exaggerated. But I want to be in a lot of movies because... I think it would be so super fun, and I really want to take on acting as one of my main focuses. And then, of course, dancing with Sia forever. She told me that uh, she wants to make uh, videos and other projects with me until I'm sick of her, which will never happen. <laughs> so um, just continuing dancing and acting and still maybe writing more books, maybe having, you know, building my empire with, like, my clothing line, maybe a makeup line. There's so many things I want to do in life. I'm never, like, I never stop. Like, I always just want to keep going. So, yeah. You're so long, young, and 10 years from now, she'll only be 24, guys. So she's got plenty oh. of time. Yeah. To you, that seems old. To me, that seems young. No, I don't <laughs> think that's that. I don't think 24 is old. Yeah. There's tons, and, and especially with movies like La La Land, and that would be a really cool thing to I mean, be in a movie musical. I love La La Land. Yeah. yeah. That would be super cool. I need to learn how to sing. <laughs> I know it's probably too late now, right? No, not at all. I mean, just keep singing in the shower. <laughs> hey, I read Hi. You're Friends with Millie, Bobby Brown, and I know you guys do together. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're, she's one of my best friends. I love her so much. Um, we do a lot of things. We, go, we went to Universal. That was really fun. We always just hang out at the hotel room, and we swim a lot. We have sleepovers. We love to shop, eat ice cream just eat in general. We, we actually, so what's really funny is she always tries to mimic my dancing because she doesn't really dance at all. So I always have, I have like seven, I have maybe like 10 videos of her dancing on my phone and she puts on different outfits and different costumes and she does like my walk that I did in competitions and she's so funny. So <laughs> You gotta post some of these. I gotta oh, I know. Funny. She would probably be so embarrassed if I posted these because they're all like payback videos of her. <laughs> Are you a fan of Stranger Things? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, that show is incredible. And I'm so excited for season two. Millie has given me some hints, and I'm so excited. But I just, like... I like the squad going on, right? Maddie and Millie. Who else is in your, your friendship yeah, squad? I don't know. We, we said that we started a squad, but <laughs> <laughs> nothing's happened. Hasn't evolved. So <laughs> I think it's just kind of like we're, like, us two are best friends. Yeah. But, yeah. All right, we have time for one more. Here we go. Hi, Maddie. Hi. Um, first of all, congratulations on just everything that you've been doing. I've been a supporter since day one. Thank and just you. seeing you here is just crazy. Like, congratulations. Thank My you. question to you is, what do you think is probably the most beneficial thing that you learned being on Dance Moms and being a part of the Adelie Dance Company? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, I learned a lot of life lessons. I mean, not just dance lessons, but life lessons. Uh, I learned that... I mean, I learned all my training from that studio, and I also learned so many things on Dance Moms. I mean, that's where I started, and that's where I came from. And even though uh, I'm excited to move on, I'm so grateful for that opportunity, and I've built such a great friendship with all the girls. They're like my sisters. Uh, but I feel like what I've learned is just even now that I did a movie, I learned camera angles and 
cool things like that. I've also learned that it's really important if you don't want to say something, then you shouldn't say it. And if someone's trying to make you say something, then you shouldn't ever feel like constricted in a way. Like you should always just make sure that you're having fun and you're having a good time and you shouldn't ever worry about trying to please other people. You should just please yourself. So that's a really big lesson that I learned on Dance Moms for sure. Great lesson. Well, congratulations on all your success. Thank we are you. so excited. Everyone should pick up this book. It's out now. It's so good. Thank so many you. little lessons and stories about Maddie's amazing career in life. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. We love having you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you.